All right, people, welcome back to another episode of Fake Card Friday. So here we have a Ubel support card, but this card was not sent to me. I know, what? You know what I mean, I'm not that famous. But you think that generally when it comes to Ubel related content that I'd be one of the top people to send or, you know, talk about with? Nope, nope, nope. This person's not to make a Ubel related card. It has nothing to do with me giving me this card and it just for, you know, sake of me. Nope, this person just decided to... Uh, make a Ubel related card, and I saw it on Card Maker, and I was like, cool, alright, so it was not a sent to me Ubel card. So, let's see how well they made this card. This is called Ring of Devotion. It's a normal trap card, and the, 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 the card is on spot. That is definitely a secret rare if I've ever seen one. And secret rare, if you guys don't know, not know, is my favorite rarity. So, really, really nice card. I see the heart and the ring, and it looks like a legitimate heart. Like, I don't know where they found this image for this card, but, I mean, it worked. Ring of Devotion. So, the trap card reads, Banish one dark monster from your hand or graveyard, and if you do, special summon one level 11 or a lower dark monster with zero attack and defense, with the same type as the banished monster from your hand or graveyard, ignoring its summoning conditions. Alright, so a good thing you said ignoring its summoning conditions, because at first you're thinking level 11 or lower, well 11, that's terror, but terror cannot be special summon except by its own effect, but ignoring summoning conditions, so... Pretty much, you play this card, you banish a dark monster from your hand or graveyard. That is a fiend, because it has to be the same type as the banished monster. I mean, there's plenty of fiends that you can banish. I mean, come on. Freaking all the burning pro abyss archetype, right? In the main deck, you just banish one of them uh, burning abyss monsters in your hand or graveyard. If you do special summon a uh, Terra Incarnate, pretty much, level 11, uh, 11 or lower. So it can be regular form of UL, it can be anything. It could be literally any fiend that ignores like summon conditions. I mean, there, there's a handful of fiends I can think of, but it has to be zero attack and defense. Or that's where pretty much the UBEL comes in, because the only level 11 <laughs> fiend I can think of that's zero attack and zero defense is UBEL. So that, that's, I mean, that's pretty summon. That's pretty strong. That's pretty strong. You just go and summon it. The effects aren't negated. It just has to uh, just summon it through its conditions. I mean, this card would be definitely helpful in the UBEL deck. Uh, but it has another effect. Uh, its original attack and defense each become equal to its level times 300. So, uh, Terra Incarnate with 3300 attack. Very, very powerful. All this effects are negated. Never mind. You're not wiping anything. Your effects are negated. But that's fine. It's fine because you resolve off the field. So, let's say, for example, you do this. You summon Terra with effect 3300 attack boss monster you're just summoning. Uh, you can't be destroyed by card effects, and you will take the damage if they do, you know, hit you with something stronger like a Utopia Lightning, uh, because your effects are negated. But let's say they don't hit you with a Utopia Lightning, let's say you hit you with, like, a Regeki or Dark Hole or something, or even, uh, well, I wouldn't say Castell because you can't activate in deck. I don't know. Something removes you from the field, banish you, uh, return you to the hand, compulse, whatever. Uh, despite your effects being negated on the field, you will resolve off the field, so you will get to summon that ultimate nightmare. So that's not terrible. That really isn't. Uh, to have Ubel actually be a beater instead of just kind of just sitting there stalling and uh, being being back up to the other cards wouldn't be terrible. And then the last effect. During either player's turn, uh, doesn't say except the turn this card since the graveyard, so that's cool. When a monster effect on the field with a level lower than the level of the dark monster you control activates its effect. You can banish this card from the graveyard destroy that monster if you do. Destroy one monster you control. Okay. But you don't negate when a monster when a monster on the field with lower level you control activates its effect. You can banish this card from there or destroy that monster if you destroy one dark monster control. So you destroy the monster, but you don't negate its effect. So let's say they summon like Skull Crabat Joker. Yeah, you can play this, destroy the Skull Crabat Joker, but it will still resolve and get its cert. And then you gotta destroy one dark monster you control, which I guess they're singing that you're gonna destroy terror to summon an ultimate nightmare. Uh okay. It's okay, it's okay. It's just like, I wish it kind of negated and destroyed. Like, why does it only pop? It's kind of like how I don't... I'm not a biggest fan of uh, Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbit. And because, yeah, it activates and I pop it, but it still activates its effect, you know? Sometimes I'd rather negate the effect, negate what it's going to do, and then just kill the monster later and just kill the monster now and allow the effect resolve. I mean, why the heck, heck would I want to, like, you know, go soak or snow rabbit a manju and still going to get surge or I can effect rare manju and then kill the manju later? So, uh, I don't know. That's just how I feel. Overall, it's it's not a, a fantastic card. If it exists when I play it, I mean, it summons tear. It really it summons tear. But, uh... Not the greatest, so uh, 
you only summon from the hand or graveyard, so pretty much Terra has to be in the duel, whether it be I drew it or I sent it to the graveyard. So probably maybe one of the first things you do, especially at this card, maybe some uh, Armageddon Knights and uh, but then I got to banish a fiend type monster. So it has to be a good combination of a fiend type deck. It can't just be you battle and this card thrown in. It has to be uh, involvement with fiends. So it's kind of situational. Uh, or I wouldn't say it's the best Ubel card, but I've seen I've seen a whole bunch of broken Ubel cards. So uh, in that sense, it's not terrible. So. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and read what uh, some people said and what some people put on like that. Uh, it has nothing to do related to me, and if anybody brings me up in this conversation, I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, we got a couple things to read. So, a uh, creator's card said, because if you can't see the abuse with you, Bell, and everything else that's compactio, I guess it's Spanish, uh, cancel basic cables, slap, and scratch that cable and put life, okay. Uh, this is literally more of a pointer lesson and what needs to occur for you, Bell, for it to not be a wholesale dead draw. Yeah, yeah, I mean, without Dark Breath or anything along, or Twin Twister or something along those lines, uh, drawing you, Bell, is just kind of bad, you know? So I guess in this sense, you would draw, like, Terra Incarnate, and then you could use this card, because it can summon from your hand, ignoring summoning condition. Uh, for any, and for any who's taken up any sort of look at my something profile, this is one of the three certainties in life of the BDS to, I don't know, okay. Yo being my favorite thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! today, both in card and in character. Yeah, I love you, Belle. Uh, she is a god, and that voice could melt in glaciers. Hello? Like, <laughs> I still have a Yubel deck to this day, uh-huh. And I also play it because, hell, if I'm replacing those cards, I need a nab and a booster. Okay, anyway, that specifically frightened you with my love affair with Yandere Dual Spirits. May the reviews and the revelry arrive in abundance. Okay, so the first person, Leaf Blady, says, Well, I love you, but I'm so glad you're trying to make it better. I also tackled this by making it a Neo Swiseman re retrain. Who I saw that. It's literally just Neo Swiseman and the Fusion, which he should have been, instead of the shitty ass you know, in that card that he is. Like, if he was the Fusion monster, it'd been much easier to do it, and we'd have a Neo Swiseman deck today, but no. Uh, the cost of needing to banish a dark attribute blaster from your hand is pretty steep, especially since it is a trap and inherently slow. It really is. I mean, it open to be MST'd or TT'd before it can resolve. TT'd. I guess I mean Twin Twisted, but TT already has the name and it's Toronto Tribute. Like, you can't just replace it in that situation. TT is Toronto Tribute. Anyway, if you do activate this thing, if you it gives you a 3.6k 3 beater, well, you can't summon Ultimate Nightmare. It has to be Terran Carnage. It's level 11. Well, Ultimate Nightmare is level 12, so you can't summon Ultimate Nightmare. Granted, you <laughs> you do want this to be blown up since you have the quick effect on the ring to destroy basically whatever you need. Because unless you're playing against rank 10 trains, your opponent is activating the effects of monsters less than 10 basically all the time. Uh, this does allow it to tag in, uh, tag out targeted effects and use some sweet non-targeting instruction on whatever monster was foolish enough to activate its effect in front of the mighty evil. Alright, I'm a bit concerned about when clause and evil monsters, and it makes me think it would miss timing if you change the effect of something, which you need to destroy this card. Uh, I believe the card says, and if you do, so I don't believe it misses timing, because and if you do doesn't make you miss timing, so that's nice. Uh, maybe you make it negate the effect of the monster and destroy it, then destroy this card, as only destroying it means the last result of the low-level monster effect that you being sent to the graveyard. Yeah, I believe so, too. I believe that this monster would still resolve its effect, you would miss timing, because your mon the monster after its effect, you chain this, you destroy the monster, the monster resolves the cycle, means that you bell is not the last thing to resolve in the chain, meaning that you bell will miss timing, so, mm. Uh, so ring doesn't destroy until after the chain resolves. Man, timing is complicated. Anyway, what you're going for is pretty cool. It makes me think they probably just run three of those, three terror and one ultimate re to reduce ricking, uh, not having to bother with um, with metal tears. Yeah, I could I could possibly see that. Yeah. Uh, this would encourage you to play more uh, terror incarnate, so you can have the terror incarnate in your hand. But as I said you can also have it in your graveyard as well with this card. So I probably just keep the ratio the same and then just. Summon, uh, send you bell tear incarnate to get rid more often if I'm gonna get ready to play his card. Uh, next person, Inks Avatar says, So I see you made this intention of bringing out you bell. Sure, you can bring out you bell with Mr. Command Call Haunted, but this card has access to you bell's other forms too. In fact, you're able to summon your know, final form a lot sooner. Yeah, plus it turns into a beat stick, which is rather needless given how you bell will inflict the damage to your opponent. But it's a cute touch, well its effects are negated, so it wouldn't be inflicting any damage to your opponent. No fact is it's for setting up 
one of the Ubel forms. So yeah, that's 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 season two. You don't have to use this whatever. You could only you know, use this one just regular Ubel's on the field and then you play the gate uh Lumbatic Gate. So you pop a monster that's levels lower than your regular Ubel and go into terror. As long as you have less timing, you know, because the monster effect and all that. Uh though I agree this should be changed to uh from when to if, yeah. Otherwise it's fine. Uh, there's not much you could do with Ubel on that that win. No, terrible, terrible win, missing timing. And then the last one is Black Deceptor that reads, uh, thanks for the council. I believe that's the creator of the card? Yeah, that's the creator of the card. That's the creator of the card. Uh, replying back to them and saying, uh, thanks for the council. You know, originally I had this card keyed out to not negate the effect of monster at summon, but then I took one look upon the list of monsters that could bring it out. That is the incredible uh, Ender. Vamanaga was on the cards and nearly went in cardiac on the spot. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't necessarily say that. So you can't just, you know, get rid of a uh, reptile and summon Vamanaga, so that's pretty powerful. I'll change this up to not be so subtle to destruction, don't worry. I learned the lesson from the Evan and Ivan Cinnabon debacle, stay tuned. Okay, I guess, I guess I'm gonna update it, I'm not gonna sh not sure if I'm gonna come back and review this update, but I just saw, you know, Ring of Devotion, you bell call your office, and I was like, uh, let me review it. It's your battle card. Of course, I have a card art. And who knows card art, too? So, overall, not a terrible card. Not a terrible card. If it feels real. I don't know. It depends on what you do about deck. If it's just a pure one, or like maybe like Doom Shadow Lady, I'll probably run it because I don't have that many fiends. But, uh, if not, then, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Anyway, tell me what you guys think about Ring of Devotion in the composition below. Like I said, I apologize. I know I probably sound like shit right now. My nose is kind of stuffed up. I'm still sick. Uh, but I'll get over it, hopefully. So, thank you guys for enjoying another uh, video of Fake Card Friday. Of course, we'll be back next Friday with a fake card to look at. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And I'll see you guys next time.